In this video, I'm going to talk about the jazz standard Emily by Johnny Mandel. Specifically, we're focused on the Bill Evans chord changes. So even though the tune was written in C major, the Bill Evans version is in G. And what I'm going to do is play the tune for you. It is a jazz waltz. And then we're going to discuss some of the form of the tune, some of the key changes, all that kind of stuff. And I really think you should make this part of your repertoire. That's why I wanted to play this for you, because I, I truly believe that not only is it a challenging tune, but it's a very pretty song and it deserves to be part of your jazz piano repertoire. So if you haven't learned the song yet, uh, let's talk about how to learn it and some of the chord changes, some of the rhythms, things like that. And we're going to get started right now. I'm going to play it for you, a couple of choruses of solos, and then we're going to come back, dive in and discuss the details. Let's get started. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. Let's take a look at Emily the tune. Essentially what you have is, what is it, 8, 16. Let's talk about A section. Now I know that it seems to repeat a little bit down here, but it doesn't go through it exactly. So it's not like a repeated A section. Anyway, so B, 
C, and then we have to switch to another one here. So this is D and even an E section. So instead of 32 bars, it actually adds an extra eight. So there's literally 40 bars to this song, which is quite unusual, but definitely most people won't hear that. They don't know the difference. They just think, oh, it's a really pretty tune. And so it just, it's a, it, uh, gonna be a little bit harder for you to memorize the changes and get it on your fingers because there's a lot of stuff going on here. All right, let's see if we have time to go through like the first couple of A sections and see what we've got going on here. So, so it starts out really standard. You got one, six, two, five. If you don't know how to deal with one, six, two, five, I actually have videos in my playlists for YouTube that you can go through those, think about what kind of chord changes you're playing. One of the things that I like to do with Bill Evans type pieces of music is to play these minor seconds in the bass in the rootless voicings like this. So F sharp, G and D. And then what it does is go from one and then it changes to one seven. So this is five to one of the key of C major and this is four in the key of C major. So we're switching a little bit into C momentarily. And then what it does next is it goes into the key of E major here. So that's what we call the key of the moment. So the key of the moment for the first line is G right up until this point and then it switches to the key of C from here to here, and then it switches to the key of E from here to here, and then it goes back to the key of G here. So you've got six, two, two, five of G, okay? So from the first line, Okay, so let's take a look at that voicing specifically because I think it's your first opportunity to throw some dissonance in there. We need a piece of manuscript though. The chord was G7 with a flat nine and it had an E in the melody. So, so I like to surround that voicing with two E's and then you've got your seventh, your flat nine, and the third of the chord, which is B natural, I mean. And so that's the chord there. So that should serve you well for that section. So let's do it one more time. Then when you get to the C major seven, so you've got a nice close voicing here and then you're gonna stretch out your voicings for the C major chord. So let's just write that out. So C major seven, let's do a 10th in the bass, where you've got C, E, and then a force in the right hand. So A, D, and G. It doesn't necessarily look like a G, it looks like an F, so let's go and fix that. Let's put it on G there. So that sounds really nice. So it's interesting as a piano player, you wanna start finding inner voicings. In other words, these closed voicings and then stretch them out at certain points. So go out, come back in, go out, come back in. So. There's an opportunity to use that minor second in the bass, in the left hand, I mean. This chord, the A13, 
might want to voice it like that. So this is the one I'm focused on right here. So let's put A13 and just use this voicing in the left hand. We've got G, C sharp, and F sharp. Like that. Really nice force. Okay, so. And this is the last voicing that I'll do here. So it's a D7 with a flat nine. And I think that's a great way to voice it. So let's do that and then we'll end for this video. So again, these are really good voicings to use pretty much anywhere. So if you got a D7 with a sharp nine and a flat 13. So let's go from the left hand, we've got F sharp, C, D. And then in the right hand, you've got F natural, which is the sharp nine, and then the B flat, which is the flat 13. And that's the voicing. What a great voicing that one is. So let's play that one more time. Okay, so that should do it for this video. We're going to do more of the voicings for Emily in another video, but I hope you enjoyed this one. If you have any questions or comments about it or anything else here on Jazz Mental, please write it in the comments below. I really appreciate your comments, by the way. And when you ask me to do recordings of this and that, I really like that because it's hard sometimes to think of what you actually want. So why don't I just ask you, what is it that you wanna learn? And I'll make a video about that. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you think about it, maybe subscribe to the channel and maybe give the video a thumbs up as well. Thanks for your time.